Well, today is the third Sunday. The third Sunday after Easter. First of all, an announcement. The uh, final announcement of the marriage bands between Mr. Neil I. Sanchez Gaviola of Cebu City, Cebu, and Chantal Amor Diores Fick of Mandawai City, uh, Cebu. And if anyone is aware of any impediments between this marriage law or invalid, then they're obliged to let me know. And the wedding is scheduled for this coming Tuesday. So the announcement of the marriage pans, final announcement between Neil Ix Sanchez Gaviola of Cebu City and Chantal Lamar Dioris Fick of Mandawe. The epistle for the third Sunday after Easter is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Peter, chapter 2. Dear beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims to refrain yourselves from carnal desires which war against the soul, have in your conversation good among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by the good works which they shall behold in you glorify God in the day of visitation. Be ye subject therefore to every human creature for God's sake, whether it be to the king as excelling, or to governors as sent by him, for the punishment of evil doers, and for the praise of the good. For so is the will of God, that by doing well you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not as making liberty a cloak for malice, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy before God and Christ Jesus our Lord. And in the Gospel, the end of the Gospel. Taking that according to St. John, chapter 16. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and now you shall not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said one to another, What is this that he said to, to us? A little while, and you shall not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me, and I, because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he said a little while? They know not what he speaketh. And Jesus knew that they had a mind to ask him. And he said to them, Of this do you inquire among yourselves, because I said, A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me. Amen, I say to you, Amen, Amen, I say to you, that you shall lament and weep, but the world shall rejoice. You shall be made sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But when she hath brought forth a child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. So also you now indeed have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man shall take from you. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Morning, the Father, and the Son, Holy Ghost, and the Men. In the last several weeks, there's been a lot of news, rumors about the Society of the St. Pius X in Rome. Is there going to be a deal between the Society and Rome? What is happening with the doctrinal preamble? What's the situation between Rome and the society? On April the 15th, Bishop Fillet was given a deadline to send a letter of response to the latest response of the various responses that came before on the, making some kind of an agreement. April 17th, he sent a letter. 
this letter. Uh, we do not know the contents of it, except that Bishop Filet says that he did not sign any particular agreement, but that we are hopeful and wait in expectation for the decision of the Pope. What is our situation? We find ourselves then now here in May 2012. What is the situation? What is the brief history of where we find ourselves? We go back a few years ago and the Pope is desirous of making some kind of a healing with the Society of St. Pius X. And so, a few years back, five or six years ago, there are some conditions that are made by the Society to Rome. And they are that, first of all, you must free the Latin Mass. You must make it clear that everyone can celebrate the true Mass and free the Latin Mass. Second condition, there must be a declaration of the nullity of the excommunications of those six bishops involved in the consecrations of 1988. After this, two conditions are fulfilled then we will agree to have doctrinal talks, to discuss the doctrine of the Council, to help the churchmen in Rome to understand that there is a great crisis of faith in our church, and that the exodus from the church and the crisis that we find ourselves in is because of the doctrines, erroneous doctrines, contained in Vatican II. And so we will have doctrinal talks. July of 2007, the first condition is met, and the Latin Mass is freed by the Bull Sumorum, or the Motu Proprio Sumorum Pontificum of Pope Benedict XVI. And it says in that document that the Latin Mass has never been abrogated. Second condition, 2009. January the 23rd, the announcement is made of a January 21st document that states that the four bishops, Bishop Williamson, Bishop uh, de Galaretta, Bishop TCA de Malaray, and uh, Bishop Follet, have their excommunications lifted. So it seems the second condition has been fulfilled. And now the next natural thing is doctrinal talks. So over the course of the next two years, between 2009 to the end of 2011, there are doctrinal talks. Expert theologians of the society meet multiple times with the expert theologians of the Pope, Rome. They discuss the errors of Vatican II. And at the end, the end, Rome doesn't change, society doesn't change, and Bishop Vallée tells us things are the same as always, nothing has changed. Rome still accepts the changes, the ecumenism, the liberalism, the new idea of tradition, and we still reject it. But then there comes the talk of a deal, some kind of practical agreement. Three years ago, before going into these agreements, these talks, a statement was made from headquarters in Menzingen, we will never accept a practical agreement, a purely practical agreement. We will not accept. There must be a doctrinal clarification. Then we can talk later on about the practical details of some kind of canonical solution. After two years of talks, we are speaking of a canonical solution. And one of the important statements made recently in all of the reports of the reports of the reports of the reports, all secrets, 
with leaks here and there, with admissions here and admissions there, and all this subterfuge and smoke in the last six months, and the secret talk for the last two years. And now, they say, Bishop Filet came, came here to the Philippines a few months ago, he said that he was surprised as September the 14th, when Cardinal Lavada gave him a doctrinal preamble. Because at the end of the discussions, they had agreed to disagree. At the end of the discussions of the two years, Rome had agreed that it doesn't agree with the society. The society had agreed that it doesn't agree with Rome. And they're not going to try to force their uh, beliefs upon us. But then comes the doctrinal preamble, and in this doctrinal preamble it says, as a condition of your canonical acceptations, again, the doctrinal preamble is secret. We have only the admissions of the leak of the contents of what someone says that somebody else said, that someone else read that was probably in the document. And according to the leak of 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 the leak, which is admitted to be true, we are required to accept Vatican Council II, Catechism of the